and welcome to this all new, brand new live Five Heart Podcast. I'm Greg Mahochko. This handsome gentleman over here to my right, your left, is none other than our founder and our fearless leader, Mr. John Dam Johnston, live from Dallas, Texas. Hello, Hi. John. How you doing, Greg? I'm doing the best I can with the tools God gave me. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the beginning of July mm-hmm. and college football season. The Big Ten media days are like two weeks away, two and a half weeks away. And you're not so, paying to send me. So what's going on with that? Well, you know, I'm cheap. <laughs> if I saved up all the money I made from podcasting over the last four years, I may be able to catch a, a bus ride up there. You could get a Starbucks. An Amtrak. A Starbucks. Yeah. I'm not going to pay $8 for a coffee, John. You know what I can do? I can go to my local grocery store, and I can pay $8 and get coffee and filters, and I can have coffee for weeks. Folgers, man. Classic roast. Let's just keep it simple. Are we going to start bashing the younger generation right away? Yes. Okay. We don't have any comments, so... So you think the bashing I, will really I, bring them in the door? Yeah, I don't get the whole Starbucks thing either. I mean, I don't mind Starbucks, but I don't really go there. I, it seems like it's coffee for Christ's sake. It's it's just it's it's Roger Moore says a runza is less. There you go. That's all that needs to be said about that. Up here, or, or up here, Minnesota. I'm in Texas. Up in, said, up in Minnesota, we have caribou coffee, and caribou is much better than Starbucks, and but it's not as big. Where are you at on tea, John? Uh, I like iced tea unsweetened. Okay. And it's just, you know, I mean, during winter, this is summer, obviously. During winter, a nice hot cup of tea is, you know, Earl Grey hot. I, uh, I, I don't care for tea kind of across the board and i the first episode of the first season of ted lasso really epitomizes my feelings on tea when he's trying his first bit of a a, a proper english tea and he says you know i always thought that uh, tea was just dirty brown water or or hot hot dirty water something like that and he takes a drink and he's he kind of you know spits it back in the cup he's like and i was not wrong (laughs) so uh James Marshall says having Starbucks Pike Place roast right now. James, it's nighttime, man. You got to get that unleaded. Go decaf after eight o'clock at night. Uh, Roger says Todd uh, doesn't drink tea. I, I bet if I'm if I'm interpreting that right, uh, no Todd, no tea. Todd is what we, uh, you know, you, you take the tea out of Todd and you just get odd, and that's kind of. Ra- uh, Summarizes Todd in anyway, so. <laughs> oh, my God. They've started a thing. It's great. Uh, by the way, we need to get to uh, uh, living in Omaha. David Matty says, good evening. Hello, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, James says, I like double chocolate mate tea. I don't I, know. If it, I'm not I don't a, know what that is. I don't know. Uh, Fred Sack says, hot, dirty water. Our former HC bought a lot of dances from her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, you know, it's good to see you, Chatterfields. Uh, really brightens my day. Um, John, since the last time we got together, I got older. Oh, that's right. It's your birthday today. Yesterday, but close enough. Isn't it today? It's, it was yesterday. All the days run together for me. They do. They do. Uh, you know why? I, Be- because it's it's been actually cold down here. Really? It's, yeah, it's only been 96 this week. And it's uh, it just fries me out, this stuff. I Every time I come here during the summer, I realize that uh, I love Minnesota. I, I like living in the cold much better than this stuff, man. I don't, A, I don't know why you would ever choose july to go to texas like you know it seems seems like a good november destination i have a wedding this friday this saturday in pflugerville which is just north of boston well 
then let me say it's a great thing that they're having a wedding in July and not in November because we all know Saturday weddings in the fall are a no no. Yeah, I wouldn't be going. Yeah, I'd uh, send a gift card. It'd be a small gift card. Thank, thank you very much, James, uh, for the uh, the birthday. Now making me a little older. I'm only 41. Um, but uh, Fred says happy belated birthday, Gregor. You finally as old as one of John's corns. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Oh, those, those, those bunions have been around. <laughs> John, it is the off season. I don't know if you were it aware. Is. It is. Uh, and it's really the, the, the dead, dead off season. So I don't know. You know what? You know what, what I see? You what do you what see? I see? I go on YouTube and I look at YouTube a lot. And what I see is rafts and rafts of Matt rules, turning Nebraska around YouTube videos from the Nebraska ilk and, we should just do a nice Matt Rules turning Nebraska around video and Okay. Well that's what well, we're... I mean it's... <laughs> I mean it's kind of generic. Yeah, everything looks good. Matt Rules turning Nebraska around. I don't know what else you're gonna say after that. Except to reiterate everything that's already happened. I'm not trying to be rude about that. It's just that oh dear God, it's June and uh, this is a hard time of year. Because nobody's been arrested lately. You know, I'm so glad. Let's just, that's the perfect accidental segue to get into one of our uh, topics of homework this this oh week. Oh, my God. It is. And it is. We we had it teed up or, or asked a couple of weeks back, and, and I'm notoriously uh, dumb and forgetful. So I forgot to do homework last week. It's kind of right. like, like school. I remember there were a lot of times I'd forget to do my homework. So I'm frantically trying to write down answers as the teacher's coming around to pick up the homework. So that's what I did this week, too. No, uh, I actually put a little bit of thought into this. And if you recall, you Chatterfields, uh, the, the question, uh, or, or I, 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 I don't remember exactly how it was brought up, but it was about uh, someone who was jumping in the transfer portal and leaving Lincoln. And somebody made it uh, like, oh, you know, once a Husker, always a Husker. I said, no. Enough of that. If you get drafted or graduate from Lincoln, you're forever a Husker. Okay. If you, and, and as we get into my list here, there are some circumstances around that as well. But if you transfer out, then you're you're not you're not a Husker. Wow, anymore. wow. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty. You know, line crossing. Did I mention I'm getting fried here in Texas? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so let's see here. James Marshall says, "Class, I was class of 2000. Uh, wow. I, uh, I was born in eight. No, no, 18, uh, 1982. <laughs> John was born in 1882. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, David. Uh, or uh, yeah, David Matney says, "When you're at the bottom, the only direction you can go is up." I think that's in, in regards to rule turning things around. Well, that's um, true. Bone led corn fed says, is it er too early to yell go big red on every block in Lincoln? It's never too early. It's also never too late. And I'd does much he, rather. Does he mean in the evening? I think it means in the, in the calendar year. Oh, okay. Cause um, I was thinking that's an after dark thing. I mean, bone led corn fed, feel free to clarify, but I think, you know, anytime's a good time uh, to yell that I, uh, Oh, where I yelled that when I was at a work conference uh, last October in Connecticut because there were other Nebraska fans and, and across the uh, conference room, I, I yelled go big red and got the appropriate response. It was great. Nobody else knew that a few people knew like big 10 area people, but there were a lot of people from out West and they were very confused. Um, so, all right. The Huskers who no longer have the honor of being called a Husker. Wow. All right, John. Okay. Do you, do you now? I think somebody said uh, uh, last time or, or when the topic was brought up, they wanted ten. I've got. Oh my god! I have six. Do you really? I do. And and one of them, I I really want to be forgiving, but I'm not going to because th th that one stung. Um. So real quick, uh, as far as Forever Huskers, I am hip Forever Husker, best name in football history. 
Uh, I have a great family that I know. They're all Husker fans because of I am hip and his name. And then they, of course, grew to love. I've been to watch some uh, Nebraska games with them. Great people. Uh, so I don't know, John, if you have any names on this list or if we're just going to. I, I only have one I thought of, and I have tried the best to stop talking about him. So uh oh, I don't really have to bring him up. Okay. Is it HCSF? They had probably, yeah. <laughs> Because that's a that's a boneleg corn fed says Scott Frost is one not on my list and I'll tell you why. Woo! I got one on the list. Okay. Uh, because of his playing career here. If, I if, get that, I get that, but I think that when you you know what when you raise the bar that high, you also have a responsibility to not drop it so low. Fair, fair. You know what I mean? There so, are expectations, and you could at least attempt to meet them. When I got down here, my brother asked me what I thought of him, and, and I explained it. And my brother Jim looked at me, whose house I'm in right now. He looked at me and he goes, "No compassion, huh?" <laughs> like, <"Jesus." laughs> what? I I wanted to jump at him. So, I I almost wore my uh, so tonight I'm, I'm repping old Herbie, uh, but I almost wore my shirt from last year, which is the uh, Saturdays are for pain and sadness. Um, but I think. Uh, that that shirt's going to be able to be retired. We can talk about that with the Matt rule turnaround. Um, so uh, before we get to some of my names here, Fred says uh, Greg's version of when you're branded and you know, you're a man <laughs> tonight on the five heart podcast. And uh, also says uh, you can't put HCSF on that list. I just count people who were here and bolted margaritas be damned. Um, let's see. Roger Moore says Todd is forever a Husker. He graduated and dodged the draft. <laughs> Where, where's Todd? He needs to be around. For this. I guess. Um, James is not on completely off of where I'm going. Wow. Let's let, let's go ahead and start there. James says when you transfer, you're forever excommunicated. Uh, so we'll go to I guess technically it's an honorable mention on my list, and that is because this one's this one stung when it was announced that he was going into the transfer portal uh, just within the last, I mean, off season. And that's Mr. Houseman, the uh, true oh, freshman okay. linebacker. Yeah, the hell with that guy. He went to Michigan. <laughs> Especially when you go in conference. Uh, so he's that's one shit. who's, he, he's one who's no longer a Husker. Uh, he, he doesn't earn that Husker for life um, branding. The, let's see. Fred says, you know what? I'll, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Because uh, when you said former Huskers, what I thought of was, you know, the decades and decades and decades of my life with Husker football. Oh, sure. No, absolutely. I didn't I really mean, think of anybody recent. That That's, I mean, I have a couple of recent, I mean, realistically, mine are all within the last 20 years. Um, but I mean, if there's others like there, there is a, for some of the, uh, I, I don't know, atrocities or what, I mean, there's, there's a, a, a way that you put Lawrence Phillips on the list, you know, I mean, I, but I, I try not to, you know, kick a guy when he's down, right. Um, six feet down. Um, but anyway, uh, Fred says, John, you're also forever a Husker red toilet cakes for all. Um, let's see here. Okay. Well, well I'm going to start this one, David, and we'll, we'll come back to that one. So, Moving up the list, uh, I have and and the these next three are kind of uh, showed a lot of promise, but also did a lot of stupid stuff. This first one, he I think he kind of came in from a, a bad situation and made some poor choices that that uh, didn't assist him in any way. And that's Mo Washington. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can expound on Ernest Hausman too. Like, I when you come in with that much potential and and you leave before you have a chance with the offseason with the brand new head coach, who just came from the NFL. I, I wanted to mention that earlier. So, all right, so I'm gonna watch it. The, the next two I have kind of tied. It's like a three A three B type of thing. Um, okay. And that's the old bike thief himself, Josh Banderas. <laughs> okay. And and uh, Mr. Wiener's on the glass, uh, Avery Moss. You did really well at this. <laughs> the next two are going to be uh, um, glaringly obvious. I, I want to say that. 
before we get that, um, oh, here we go. <laughs> Roger Moore says new category forever a Husker in hell. Uh, well, that'd be uh, Steve Peterson, <laughs> Sean Eichhorst. Yeah. Basically, most athletic directors in the past <laughs> 20 years. Bill Moose probably has a uh, maybe not the ninth circle, but you know, second or third. Um, Fred says, uh, I'd say Wandale Robinson, even though he was smart to get out of here before the play calling almost got him killed. And and David Matney also says Wandale uh, Robinson. But Fred, it's it's exactly why the, the play calling that yeah. I, I kind of gave him a pass because he left for his own safety. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I thought of one. I thought of Wandale. Yeah, um, but, you know, know I think Wandale deserves a. I I mean, my brother hit me with the compassion thing, and I'm just like shit. So yeah, you, you you mean this is not going to be a fun, exciting John's fired up show? Well, I are are you going to be nice all night? What the hell? I'm probably going to be nice all night. That is not what the people want to see. <laughs> well, the goddamn and every once in a while they get it. Oh, sorry guys. I, all right, I'm that's the end Texas. of the show. I'm in Texas. Yeah, aren't maybe you I'm a nice person in Texas. Aren't you supposed to be holding? Maybe a I'm going right to go to a wedding. Maybe I'm going to go to a wedding Saturday near Austin, Texas, and yell at the top of my lungs during the reception. Go big red and see what the fuck happens. Well, this is going to be the last time we see John. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear something red. Uh, to, to you know, I, I flew into town July Fourth night. And it was kind of cool to, you know, fly into Dallas. And I, I, I flew southwest, so I flew into Love Field, not DFW. But, you know, as in your outskirts of Dallas, you can look down and all the neighborhood fireworks, It was they were everywhere. It was mm-hmm. all over the place. And as you got closer to Dallas, they got less and less, I think, because Dallas has pretty restrictive uh, fireworks stuff. When I was down here, living down here in the summer in the 80s, uh, it seems to me I remember what, uh, bottle rockets were illegal. And the reason oh. they were illegal was because so many homes in Texas had wood shingles. Right, right. And then one one summer I was down here, uh, like a whole neighborhood burned down from a bottle rocket at somebody's roof. But I mean, it, like it was, Chicago burned down because of a cow kicking over a lantern, so anything's possible. Yeah, but you know that's Texas. Yep. And then and then I got here to Jim's house in South Dallas, and man, things were going off till like two, three in the morning. Big booming Crazy. things. Probably handguns too. <laughs> Can never be too sure. All I know is that uh, you know we have small children in the house, and and they were uh, starting to fire off the fireworks about eight fifteen uh, Tuesday, like two three houses down this way here, and uh, yeah, not not uh, not great. It was very loud. It almost seemed like it was right outside the boys' room. So. Uh, let's see. Fred has this to say about you, John. He says the state of Texas drops John's anger and charisma points by about wow 10. wow this is, is it, this this is the loving me before football season uh, is this because like do you have families that's sitting right there in the room with you and so no, you can't I don't. Yell? They're, they they went to bed they're watching tv they have headphones on because i told them i probably usually get loud well I'm just, so that, that's I'm why just, it's a toned down show you, i i i i've meditated i you know I'm at peace with the world. <laughs> um, Blaine says, John, have a Lone Star for me. Well, that's not possible, uh, Blaine, because John doesn't drink anymore. I've had Lone Star before. It's a really shitty beer. It's, you know, when I when I went to Texas the first time I met Brian, uh, I had a Lone Star. He looked at me like, he's like, you know, you're drinking basically the Texas equivalent of Bud Light. Yeah, it's, uh, it's then pretty... I felt bad. Um, all right, so let's get back to the list, shall we? Okay, back to the list. All right, back to the list. We have to. I have to pull up the exact number uh, of years that he uh, played at Nebraska because it's been a couple of minutes. Um, not thirty six years. He's thirty six years old, and he played quarterback. Any guesses? Any guesses? Well, wait, wait. He's thirty six years old. And he played quarterback? Wait a minute. This can't be the right. That's not the right. Son of a gun. Okay. No, I wrote down the wrong one. Uh, Sam Keller. Well, okay. You know what? He's, you're right. Fuck that guy. Yeah. He'd still be playing NCAA football if it wasn't for him and that other son of a bitch they'd sued. We lost 10 good years of NCAA football. Yeah. I mean, it's coming back, I think, 
this year or next year? I next year. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Allegedly. Yeah. Um Wikipedia has, <laughs> puts him up there. Uh his football career never took off on any significant professional level. He's still remembered by many college football fans for being the player with a lawsuit against EA Sports and the NCAA that ultimately resulted in the cancellation of the widely popular NCAA football video game series after 17 consecutive years of release. So that's it. Came to us from uh, Arizona State in uh, 2006 and had to sit out. Um, just, you know, didn't I don't, I don't even think he really played uh, a whole lot. Um, Sam Keller? Ah, okay, so as, as a redshirt senior, twenty four hundred yards, fourteen touchdowns right. in nine games. So, right. I mean, just the the numbers aren't impressive, um, you know. And now, granted, I think this was before the Big Twelve uh, stopped playing defense as well. Um, so, see, I think I think in Keller's case, who was he was replaced by Joe Gans, if I remember right. And Callahan wanted to keep playing him until he really didn't play well enough that he didn't have a choice to, but to replace him. But that's, again, where you kind of look at a guy and you go, you know, you're going to get it for the NCAA football game, not for what happened under Callahan, because Callahan was just not a – he's just a brain-dead head coach. And Fred Sacco cannot unhusker Keller, uh, even because of the, video, uh, the football game, the video game. Uh, he had to play for Billy C., who would not let him audible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just Bill Callahan was just difficult. You know, Bill Callahan was all about I'm a genius offensive guy, and and he wasn't. He was just terrible. You know, so H E S F man. Yeah, see, that's that that's a thing with me being compassionate right now, Greg. It's like I look at these players and their circumstance, and it, unless you know, like the the I stole a bicycle or I showed my wiener thing. <laughs> Those are just self-inflicted stupid wounds. No matter, those weren't up to coaches that screwed you over. But a lot of cases, I mean, we just have not done well in the coach hiring business. I mean, distressed Husker here puts up. Uh, I, I, oh, there you go. I got it. Luke McCaffrey, Tyjon Lindsay, and Decoldus Crawford. You know, Luke McCaffrey. I kind of look at that and I go, eh. yeah, okay. You know, he's he was kind of a. I don't know. He couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to do. He looked good sometimes running the option, but he wanted to be a quarterback. I don't know what to do with him. At the same time, you look at the situation he was in, wasn't a good situation. Has he made his situation better? Yeah, not really. Wondell Robinson at least transferred and said, I'm going to make a pro career, and he did. So maybe that's it, Greg. I'm looking for these people to become – Members standing, stand up, contributing members of a productive society. <laughs> Fred, Fred asks if we need to do a wellness check on you, John. Oh, uh, blink God. twice if you're being held hostage. Or are yeah. you really in a basement in Arizona? I'm not in a basement in Arizona. Well, can you? It, you uh, know, I, I really, honestly have have learned that I, I really don't believe, but I don't belong in in ninety eight, ninety nine degree weather. <laughs> Really don't. I just, I my part of me has melted. I um <clears throat> look, you probably don't want to give this out live on YouTube, but what's your brother's address? Because I wanna I wanna send uh, an officer over and make sure you're okay. <laughs> no, I just, well, I'm fine. I'm good. okay. All right. Um Mark Weller says uh as far as uh, no long no no husker or no longer a husker for life, uh any Calabrasco recruit. We did have that, a lot of them, and they shuffled that, out very quickly. That would have been – oh, come on. Come, the receiver's son that was smoking dope. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson Jr.? Yeah, yeah. That guy, he didn't uh, really – Tristan Jebbia? With, he didn't – you know, Jebbia went to other places. And Oregon tried State? To, yeah, he went He went and he tried to play. I mean, he, the, got uh, some, uh, he, he got Stanton. some time in. Johnny Stanton became a fullback in the NFL. That's a guy – who looked at himself and said, I'm just going to do what's required to make a career out of this. And he did a good job. He, uh, he, Oh he, my God. Look at all of these people. Mike Rankin brings up Joe Daly. I got no beef with Joe Daly. I got all the only beef I have with Joe. He Daly went to, he went to UNC, whole, right? 
I, I can't remember. All I can remember is Joe Daly is him running out of bounds with no time on the clock. And you're like, what the hell is he running out of bounds for, man? Uh, all right. <clears throat> Blank Cole says, John, since you're in a forgiving mood, Byron Bennett. Okay. This is one that we need to address because here's the thing. That whole Byron Bennett has always been known since like 94 uh, as the guy who missed the kick in that game. And if you watch that game and if you know that game, there were so many things that happened in that game that Byron Bennett really got the shit into the stick. Because nobody mentions, nobody says the 94 Orange Bowl, I think it was, the 94 Orange Bowl, in which they called unbelievable me- penalties against Nebraska and screwed us out of a football game. We always just conclude it with, Byron Bennett missed a kick. He doesn't deserve that for missing a kick. I mean, they were just, they were fucked by the refs so hard in that game. Put it this way, that game finished, what, 18 to 16? And yet... That was one that should have been a game that you would look at and ESPN at Yen would go, here's a classic football game. But they never show that. Why don't they show it? Because it was a screw job. The whole game was just a giant screw job against Nebraska. I know we can always go, well, the refs hate our team. But in that game, they, you had the William Floyd fumble at the goal line that was, should have been called a fumble that was called a touchdown. You had the phantom what was it? Uh, punt return block in the back that nobody ever saw. You could you could say iffy on the the end of the game where they called the penalty out of bounds because even if you hear from Florida State players, they'll say we manufactured that penalty on purpose and they kind of did. But that game was just a, a giant, just a. Uh... All right, for, Fred says I have no bad feelings for Byron Bennett. We got screwed blinder than a co-ed in an O Street loft apartment sex den. <sighs> yeah, and he it was, follows it, was it just up. Terrible. We're we're finally getting we're getting him warmed up, folks. Uh, because Fred says, "Let the hate flow, John." <laughs> it was you know so many of those bowl games in the eighties and, and during that time frame, you just go down to the south and get screwed in the bowl games, which is why even now I have a hard time with them doing the college football playoff and saying, "Oh, we're just going to keep the bowl sites." Whatever, you fucking bunch of dingbats that organize this stuff. You know, this is the dumbest sport in the history of humankind. It really is. If you go all the way through college football history, it is everything about it is completely stupid. And we love it. I mean, that's just, maybe we should, we should do a diagnostic show about human beings. Maybe we should, John. Yeah. Um, I'm Roger- going back to college. <clears throat> Roger Moore says, uh, Vince Ferragamo. How would you, how could Vince Ferragamo not be a Husker anymore, Roger? Because he question. just bringing up names. I think people loved Vince Ferragamo. There was one quarterback that people don't mention a lot that was really fun to watch. It was Vince Ferragamo. You know, back in the, back when I was <laughs> not as old as I am now. <laughs> so the last name on my list is a Husker who showed so much promise. Was they it Noah Fant? No, he was never a Husker. Fucker. Uh, let me rephrase. Is a player who showed so much promise, but could not get out of his own way. Uh, now, hmm? Am I supposed to guess? Not yet. Oh. Uh, played uh, in Nebraska in the early aughts for a few years. Was a freshman All-American. Uh, first team freshman All American, and parlayed his on and off the field antics into a surprisingly lengthy uh, NFL career. But uh, just his attitude, his approach, I think, uh, soured him on a lot of people. And that's Should Richie in- Incognito. Yeah, of course. Richie Incognito. Yeah. Well, I. <sighs> You would get, you would get, you know. I think that there's a fair number of people that will probably look at you and say, "Richie Incognito represents exactly what is wrong with Nebraska's line," and that he was, he was obviously. Oh, I don't want to say he was dirty, but he was probably dirty. But he was also a nasty son of a bitch, and I think you would get, you could have a lot of conversations around the fact that. We really haven't had any linemen since then that have been just really 
ugly things when they walked on a football field. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, I'm going to hit you after the whistle sometimes. Kind of shit like that. I think Richie and Cognino probably took it a little far, but when you look at Nebraska's line, you kind of go, can we have, I don't know, let's get, can we have just maybe for the 2023 season, one guy that bites ankles. (laughs) You're in a pile, you bite a guy's calf. There you go. Distressed, uh, distressed Husker says I'd take a handful of Richie's, smack them in the mouth, and terrify the defenses. Yeah. Um, uh, so look, it, it's again a huge amount of potential, but unable to or not in it, unable to get out of his own way. Um, he uh, started a fight in practice, uh, allegedly uh, spit on a player in the Troy State game. Uh, picked a fight in a in a loss to Penn State, had to sit out, came back against Colorado, got a 15-yard uh, personal foul penalty that uh, was a contributing factor in the loss. Was, got to go to the Menninger Clinic in Topeka for uh, behavioral purposes after uh, being suspended indefinitely, fighting in practice. I mean, just... Yeah, there's a you can have a level of dumb. I think if you, if you ever talk to some of these guys that play football, um, I think that what they the key to the football thing is when you put on your gear and you cross that white line on the field, that's where you turn into a completely different human being. You know what I mean? You just change. Your whole personality has to change. I mean, if you know, case in point, and I have not talked to Indama Kinsu, but I think if you looked at Indama Kinsu, that would be a good representation of that. It, off the field, the guy is a class act. I think as far as anybody can say in, but on the field, he's a wrecking crew, one man army kind of thing yep. going on. You know, I, that whole big 12 championship of throwing guys around like they were rag dolls. That's, that's what you want from some of these guys, but you know, the, a lot of uh, comments this, about, about this selection. Dion Pryor says we had no line the last 15 years in embarrassment. Um, Fred says, uh, Richie once shot a man just for snoring too loud. <laughs> uh, James Marshall says, Incognito was strong as a bull. Uh, and Terrell Farley's tank, good to see you back, TFT, uh, said, Norden Nuali. Nu- nu- Norden Nuali. Thank you. Um, uh, is that dude. Uh, let's see. Uh, David Matney says, we could not have nasty linemen now because they're too busy having false star penalties. That's fair. <laughs> Funny, uh, a little painful, but fair. Um, there we'll see. Fred uh, says, our last decade plus uh, offensive lineman, the only thing they abuse is the menu at Raising Cane's. Don't get me started on that overrated chicken joint. Wow. Um, I've, don't, I've said that before. You have. Uh, Dion Pryor says he was the world's most interesting lineman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see it, yeah. And uh, TFT says, I promise you and everyone out there, I would rather die on the field than have to watch another minute from the sideline. So, and this is a hot take. All chicken is overrated. Oh, let's pump yeah, the brakes I, I eat on a lot gross generalizations <laughs> from the guy who, from the guy who just said that Raising Cane's is overrated. Um, so let's see here. A couple uh, comments that were picked up throughout. Uh, James Marshall says, in regards to Lawrence Phillips, he's a Husker we can't disown and are obligated to perpetually a- apologize for him. You know, I I look at LP and I think that that entire story is really just full of unbelievable sadness. I don't think no. I'll ever apologize to anybody for Lawrence Phillips. But, you know, if you guys remember when I had Paul Koch on, uh, you know, he wrote the the big, thick Husker books. Uh, he was a personal friend to LP, and he, we have, he and I have talked a lot about what happened with LP and everything. And I guess through that conversation, you know, I did develop a lot of compassion for the guy. I mean, he did – that is the case of self-inflicted wounds, but at the same time, you know, you kind of look at it and look at the potential of somebody and how they ended up, and it's very sad. So there you go. Um. Off topic, but not unfunny. Uh, Bone Lead Corn Fed says, which chicken legs taste better, the front ones or back ones? What? <laughs> I usually uh, like the one on the left. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, TFT says that Yardbird is trash. Wow. <laughs> and uh, and Mark Weiler here says Calabrasca recruits a uh, KJJ, Tristan Jebby, Ty John Lindsay. I think we mentioned all of those. Yeah. Um, now, James Marshall said this. This is a hot take, and I'm curious on your thoughts on hot it, John. Take. Hot take. I think so. Uh, James says, had they stuck with Callahan, the last 12 years would have been exponentially better. I don't think so. I really don't. I just, you know, I know there's a lot of people that have that thing about, well, he could have had a different defensive coordinator. And that wasn't the problem with Bill Callahan. The problem with Bill Callahan is that he wouldn't, I mean, he wasn't a leader. I mean, if they would have stuck with Bill Callahan, he would have sooner or later, he would have driven us, driven us all mind-bogglingly insane. Because, I mean, remember when he had the first losing season in like 40 years at Nebraska, his response was, it's just a game. We would have had to put up with that. He would have been the opposite of screaming Bo Pelini and that he would have come up with inane, stupid-ass comments about everything. So I just, you know, Bill Callen, I just he drove me insane. He did because he, you know, his lack of leadership. If you're going to be paid millions of dollars and if you're going to be the leader of a program and like uh, uh, any kind, this doesn't matter if you're just a football coach or if you're helping your kid's soccer team as a coach, you know, if you're going to do that kind of stuff, you have to be able to take the good with the bad and deal with it in grace. And Bill Callahan, when anything went bad, he just ran and hid like a little child, like a little child. A little child, he little child, more like little child. I uh, uh, want you to go ahead and read this one from Fred. The, the team gave up on him. It was a longer version of what he did at the Raiders. I I agree with that. I I did. I just said. Uh, uh, I mean, if you remember the Raiders Super Bowl, I think he got what was it? He changed the game plan the night before. And his it drove his center completely night bat shit crazy, and his his starting center was disappeared, and, and that's because Bill Callahan was a you know one of those guys with a mask on as a head coach, it's like projecting confidence but never had any. How's that? I am doing analysis right there. We're, we're, I'm we're, a we're, freelance we're psychologist therapist guy. A uh, couple, couple, couple really. Uh, Conflicting thoughts here. Fred says Billy C thought he could get seven wins and sneak in as the wild card, a fucking dolt. But uh, that's, James that's says exactly right. Callahan was the best leader at Lincoln since Osborne. Mm-hmm. You almost have to put Frankie Solich up. The the administration was against Solich from the beginning. Yeah, I think he did. Be, being the handpicked, you know, right chosen successor. Um, I, but also saying the Callahan's the best. Let, let's let's put Solich out of the conversation at least temporarily. Okay. To say that Callahan's the best leader at Lincoln since Osborne, and we're not counting Matt Rule because we haven't seen anything on the field yet. Right. So right. you got Callahan, Pelini, Riley, and and Frost. I I the only the only thing I'll say is that you still had a lot of guys in the Bo Pelini locker room who would say that they would run through a brick wall for Bo. And I don't know. I've never heard anybody say that about Callahan. Certainly not the last two. I think I think that if you've ever watched like Dan or listened to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History podcast, he'll do stuff on the Japanese where he talks about like the Japanese warrior code. And he, what he'll say is that the Japanese were just like everyone else, only more so. And I would say that about Bo Pelini. He was just like everybody else, only more so. So, you know, I think, you know, everybody knows that Bo Pelini was either, like, mostly dead or batshit crazy. So, you know. uh, This is great. TFT says the only thing Callahan did better than Pelini was recruit. Um, Fred says that Callahan wasn't the best leader in a phone booth. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Uh, David Matney says Frost is absolute rock bottom. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Uh, who do you think was Steve Peterson's first choice for head coach? 
I don't remember. Wasn't it uh, the guy from Arkansas? Come on. Uh, Houston Nuts? Supposed- yeah, that yeah. supposedly got on the plane. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, let's see. Blaine Cole says players would run through a brick wall to get to Callahan. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good point. And I don't recall this. Uh, bone led corn fed says Fabian Washington and his illegal troubles. I don't either. Was that while he was in Lincoln or was that while he was in, in was it Baltimore? Wasn't he a Raider? Cause he was oh, fast. Maybe. maybe. I mean, he was a high draft pick. I don't uh, remember his legal troubles though. Fred says, "Without Callahan's, yes, the, I meant to spell it that way. Recruits, Bo wouldn't uh, would have been much worse. That's I do true. not disagree. Yeah. He was not a recruiter. Um, all right, let's get back into some of these uh, favorite or starred comments. Uh, why? Oh, here we go. Living in Omaha, David Manny says, "Why not stick with Polini? Because Polini was a train wreck that was well off the rails." Yeah, I think we just wore him out or he wore out or something. When I think there. I think he wore out as welcome. You can't, I mean, was was that Eichhorst, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, nice. look, you don't have to like your boss. I Lord knows I've not always liked my bosses, but, and, and I'm not saying you, you even have to respect them or, or treat, but you can't just go, around bashing them right i mean there has to be some especially when you're talking a multi-million dollar industry which is nebraska football there has to be some semblance of being able to work together um am i crying that both of them are gone absolutely not um in fact it, it should have been you know first one and then the other immediately rather than suffering through the mike riley era so i think you just have to make this journey well, that's very. Uh... I mean, you know what I mean. Look at Alabama again. I'll go back to the Alabama. The you know Paul Bear Bryant retiring, and then they had to go through their journey to find Nick Saban. And what did they have to do along their journey? They had to hire coaches that were you know Paul Bear Bryant coaches, or they were Alabama guys, or stuff like that, until they finally sunk so low and got so fucked up that they went enough of this. That we have to be a former Husker shit, and now that's where we're at. So maybe the Matt rule is going to be Nick Saban. Yep. Uh, Roger Moore says that Pelini's temper did him in. I don't disagree. Uh, James Marshall, for whatever reason, is just a super Callahan apologist and says we gave up on Callahan too quickly. And like, I'm not bashing you, James. I, I, I think it, it, it was timed out the way it was for a reason. Um, And I don't know how much more time you give a guy on a sinking ship. I, you know what? I, Something's in that coffee that he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> TFT says we fired Pelini two years too early, which is why Riley was the only coach dumb enough to take the job. He was third nationally during his tenure in wins in all of college football, uh, specifying he, uh, meaning Bo Pelini, uh, only Chip Kelly and, and Nick Saban won more games than Bo during his tenure. Uh, uh, he's He was a decent quarterback away from the national championship in 09. Well, he... I, I mean, when you come to Frank and you come to Bo, I, let's face it, both of those people were done in by fucking idiot athletic directors that made stupid decisions. I mean, you can't really gloss that over. I have no idea, no idea whatsoever what was going through Sean Eichhorst's mind that he went, I'm going to fire Bo Pelini after a 93 season and hire this guy that's never had any success. Just never, like, what were you doing? What were you thinking? No idea of what that might have been. You know, unless you were living in some kind of fantasy world that I, you know, I just, uh. oh, this wow. getting personal. This getting personal <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Fred says, I think Kevin Cosgrove hijacked James account, <laughs> which is nicer than what distressed Husker said, who said nominate James Marshall as someone who no longer did. Now that's not nice. And, wow, and we definitely do guys. not endorse that. We yeah. laugh, we, we chuckle. Uh, that but, dist- you know what that distressed guy that guy needs some therapy that's what we're here <laughs> for no wait that's what you're there for on monday nights yeah. yeah that's probably why he's here complaining tonight because you weren't around monday no, i wasn't around monday that's, that's true. all right uh when we talk about journeys though uh james did say that alabama won a national title on that journey they did 
Pat died, beat Miami with 18 yards passing. Funny how you can remember that. Uh, Fred says, uh, can't unhusker James. He's all right. Maybe an 80 pound playbook fell on his foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, right, this is great. We haven't even got to the second assignment yet. Um, oh. No. All right. So, uh, Corn Husker Corner says, what's up, boys? Dead season. Here we go. We are on the cusp of finally clawing our way out of the shithole of losing. We are. 15 and 0. Write it down. Uh, Corn Husker Corner also says, uh, Pelini was a DC, Callahan an O-line coach, and rules a head coach. We got our guy. I have a gut feeling. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to respond in, in some manner. Thank you. I was looking ahead. I was looking ahead to the next assignment. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. hope you're ready for it. Um, I kind of. Fred says we got Husker philosophy with uh, John Critties Johnston. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, MK, who I believe gave us the assignment a couple weeks back about our uh, uh, no longer a Husker, you know, once a Husker, always a Husker. Uh, Branding said, well done, Greg. What's your take on Matt Davison? And which list do you think he'll end on the best or worst? Oh, God, that's a hard one. I'm I'm going to say this. I'm going to be about as diplomatic as possible. Neither. I mean, like, there's a, there's a way in which the, you know, I was trying to look up his stats. Uh, they're not world beating. I mean, no. <laughs> he had six touchdowns. Uh, 93 receptions, uh, just shy of 1,500 yards over four years. It, that's not, you know, I appreciate that one, you know, miraculous play in in Columbia, Missouri. But outside of that, I mean, I think the biggest favor you can do the guy is just stop talking about him, right? Yeah, that's I mean, probably he's, true. He's not going to end up on a best or worst. He's just, he's just there. He's just playing golf. Uh, let's see. Fred says Matt Davison on commentary was like listening to Chris Collinsworth with all the enthusiasm of a roofied up co-ed doing the walk of shame at 4 a.m. I think, you know, when you look at Matt Davidson, you have to ask yourself, was he a part of all of this destruction of the program thing? Or was he in the sucked, you know, was he, I don't want to say innocent bystander, but was he sucked into the vortex of hell? because he was that close to Scott Frost. And I, that's a question that we'll probably never really get the answer to until maybe 10 years from now. So but, you, you, you know what I mean? You, the, the, are, the, like, stink of, the stink of what happened got spread all over the place on a lot of other people. So you're wondering, is is was he was he a greater factor or, or was he just pulled into the orbit right, going right. into the black hole? Yeah, right. That's a good question. That, that's where my brother, you know, the, who is the compassion? Son of a bitch. Uh, TFT says I was within 10 feet of Matt Davison two weeks ago and weekends ago. And it was all I could do to keep the intrusive thoughts from winning and punching him. He's number one on the douchebag list. So I'm glad you didn't punch him because that would only hurt you. And realistically it would hurt us as well because we'll have to be like one of our regulars. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you guys do just remember reflects poorly on us. So if you want to do good things, go make donations to like, yeah. uh, you know, your local food shelters in our name. Uh, go to uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club and, you know, spend some quality time with underprivileged yeah. youth and, and you know, do that. Don't don't go hit teach people. Teach children how to properly swear, for God's sake. Yeah. Like I'm, like I'm accidentally starting to teach mine. Yeah. Um, Does your wife is, get angry at you? Uh, she swears worse than I do. Well, then there you go. <laughs> Which I don't know it's if that's a, good. You know, the, <laughs> the parents that are together, it's a loving household. Yeah. Yeah. We're together. Uh, <laughs> living in Omaha, David Matney says, do you think Scott Frost ever shows up at any anniversaries or ever makes another appearance inside Memorial Stadium? And I'll say yes. And I'll tell you why. Time heals all wounds. Okay. It's not going to be anytime soon. I'm still angry about the Battle of Psalm. Nine, uh, no, in 2047, when they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the national championship team, that might be the next time we see him, honestly. <laughs> That's true. And you know what? That's 25 years of, 
you know, Matt Rule and company and, and conference yeah. championships and national championships will have put all that negativity behind. Yeah, exactly. I uh I play, I think you know this, I play that retro bowl on my phone, John. That that yes, yeah. And I've never lost a game. What? In thirty three some odd years, uh or Debbie, seasons of play. Seriously? What do you yeah. what do you play on? On like dynamic, like the better you are, the harder it's supposed to be. Yeah. Exactly. You don't play on hard or extreme. I can't help that I'm really good, John. Okay, whatever. Wow, you're being very. You know what you should do? You should try playing that on an airplane in turbulence. (laughs) Because I threw four (laughs) interceptions in one game trying to do that. I didn't win that one. Yeah, Fred. uh, Yes, Retro Bowl is what uh, John does after uh, most Husker losses. Um, (sighs) Yeah. Bone Lead Corn Fed says John's face on a shirt called the face of Husker football. There you go. Or at least the face of Husker nation. Um, James says that nobody ever blames Frank's recruiting for Callahan's defenses. they has got a point there. That's true. <laughs> James. Okay. You, you, you like Bill Callahan. We get it. You, you know what? I will, I will compliment him for sticking with the theme. There you go. We appreciate your loyalty. Um, Corn Husker Corner says, screw time, winning heals all wounds. Uh, I'll forget point. Scott Frost immediately if we start winning. And David Matney says, when he returns, can we do a ceremonial onside kick? <laughs> he has to recover it. <laughs> oh, <sighs> gosh. Uh, that made me smile. That made me giggle. Um, thank you. That's a, that's a good one, David. Uh, David also says we will eventually get to our second half of the show. Uh, we should have a Chatterverse prediction show where the Chatterverse makes our predictions for the season. It's not a bad what, idea. Yeah, we we need to do that. We'll have we, to May August. We will. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out the logistics of that. Yeah, find a way to to bring you all in somehow, some way. Um, all right. So the other part of the show, John. Oh God. Is the tunnel walk? You remember yes. we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yes, we did. And how, if we went back to 1994, other songs that could have been used instead of Alan Parsons Project's uh, "Serious," correct? Yeah. Yes. H- have you thought of a a song? I, I'm there. You go. There it is in the chat. Red River Rock, Johnny and the Hurricanes, 1959. Uh huh. Okay. You guys can look it up on YouTube. We will share uh, the uh, appropriately. We can't play it because they'll kick us off of YouTube, right. but we can embed the uh, music video or song or whatever uh, into uh, the the article on Coronation. So check here's that a, out. Here's here's number two. Oh, you have more than one? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, one Tin Soldier by Coven. That's the theme to Billy Jack. One tin soldier rides away. Except we change the words. I don't know what the words are yet, but we change them. Only if we, we can get do, uh, the Killigans to do the cover. We just do the uh, one tin soldier. And then here's another one. Uh, uh, the influence on this one is uh, obvious. Oh, jeez. John, you're not even in West Texas. <laughs> It's a pretty song. Again, you know, I thought, I thought, why wouldn't we have a country song for our Tunnel Walk song? Same reason Virginia Tech doesn't. And you know, you know what I did, Greg? What'd you do, John? I wrote a country song. Oh, okay. Wait, where, how do we put a uh, brand? How do you do the overlays? Where's the overlays on this damn thing? My screen is different because I'm on my laptop. Did, did you have it in the overlay? Yes, I put the cover Uh-oh. on there. You're going to want to put that back up there because I'm pretty sure I, I, cleared out, I cleared out all the overlays. Oh, my God. You did? Yeah. So oh, while, Holy cow. Let me well, they were, they were all last week, I thought. So my, my apologies. Um, okay. here's, oh, here the, here's, here's the song I did. Wait, hold on. Let's, let's do a few things here. Let's turn off some. All right, always stay winner, Herbie, by Corn Nation. Uh huh. Did you pull that off of uh, some AI art generator? No, that that doesn't even look like AI. It would be terrible AI. Here, oh, no. I am going to paste one of the. I, okay, 
here here's the uh here's the here's the title always and stay I, winter Herbie, by coronation a country song okay and, and listen look this is one of the parts of the chorus how does it go I, well, I have to figure out the music to put it to fred asks oh god what the fuck is this did john hit the cooking sherry down in texas there's a whisper in the Nebraska breeze reminding me of winning. That whisper builds, that whisper cries, winning in the morning skies. Huh? Huh? But what about in the afternoon and evening skies? Yes, God. Oh, my God. You... <laughs> right, let's see. Uh, 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 let, me, let me see if I can. Uh... Oh, there. Here it is. Here's, here's another part of the chorus. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. Did AI write this? You will get no. your money back. <laughs> Don't live your life like a loser. Today might feel a time to be like a loser, but that ain't no way to lead a life. <laughs> I feel like your sentences are missing words. <laughs> But that ain't no way to lead a life. Well, you miss it. You see, in Nebraska, oh, here we go. when I was a child. Okay, here, I see, I see, I see. But that ain't no way to lead a life in Nebraska. When I was a child, I met a winner. Man, how can you be so winner? <laughs> Asked I. Here was his wise reply. Don't live your life like a loser. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay, here's the, here's the, here you go. Oh, there's see, more? This, the, yeah, this next part's about Iowa. Oh, God. It's a metaphor. It's an old woman, but it's really Iowa. Met an old lady who lived like a loser. What happened to her? Asked I. Here was his wise reprise. Don't live your life like a loser. Today might feel a time to be like a loser, but that ain't no way. Oh, God. <laughs> and then this is the this is the end of the song. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Lil, Lil Herbie, keep your jeans red. Always... Stay a winner, Herbie. Always stay. A winner. See that? And we just need to put everybody could sing that. I mean, why wouldn't everybody go for the song? The part of the song was that uh, you know where was that at? Uh, I there's have a no whisper idea. In, there's the whisper in the Nebraska breeze reminding me of winning. Huh? That might be the only rationally is it legible isn't part that, of the but, whole song. Isn't that really what we're looking forward to here? Cornhusker Corner says this is lacking in the details and substance, John, much like Nebraska the last few years. So I get what oh you're going God. for. <laughs> he said Scott Frost would like it. <laughs> Holy cow. Fred, listen, Fred asks listen. if Bob Diaco wrote that for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you saw it. Um, uh, somebody uh, asked it. It might have been Roger said, are we, no, Blaine Cole says, are we sure you don't imbibe? Uh <laughs> And, I told you the Texas heat. And David Matney says we might need an intervention for John. David, I think that's what this is supposed oh, to be each and every week. <laughs> I, you know, I put my, I poured my heart and soul into this. Yeah, you should have kept some for yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not nice, and and I I'd like to apologize, but that was you were missing some really significant words uh, in there to make it a coherent thought. Uh, it's like the end of Billy Madison. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Wow, wow. I'm, <laughs> I'm going I'm to go weep now. Um, if what did you, you have, Greg? What did you, you didn't have anything majestic as that, did you? I, no, I actually left that one all on you. I, I, I didn't have one. I, I was uh, working on, on trying to find one, and then my computer uh, locked up, so... I what I really want is something that starts off quiet and then builds up to, you know, like I want them, you know, when they're all walking through the tunnel, high fiving the kids and everything like that, they're touching the horseshoe. I want that to be, you know, like a, 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 a just a, a slowly building. And then when they open up the gates and the team runs out, I really want it to crescendo. And I haven't found that perfect song yet. So it's all my fault. This is this is at the beginning. It could start slow. Okay. When you feel that uh, winning breeze in that uh, old Nebraska sky, you got to come a-running. Boy, I'm going to tell you why. The Huskers. 
that's See, no are you gonna that, read are you gonna hit the, that that's hit. better than what you can <laughs> coronation says wait a minute i know those guys uh here i am devoted to herbie how i love the way you look in your red jeans can't believe i let the losing my eye oh i'm sorry there's a word missing losing cloud my eye yeah, that's the problem. I think you were missing a lot of word. Well, I, I was really, you know, I was kind of in a trance. Yeah, we know shit. Um, <laughs> Roger Moore says the theme to Shaft. Uh, Fred Sacco had said uh, uh, Eminence Front by The Who. There were a couple. Um, Cornhusker Corner says he could see Bob Dylan slurring his way through that song, John. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. Um. James Marshall says, if a Cali team comes in and wins the Big Ten, then nobody won the Big Ten. That's off topic, but we'll take it. Um, let's see. There were a couple other. when Right before you really got going with your uh, silly com. I mean, your, your let's see. Uh, Don hey, Dre I, says, Big John. I Yeah, Big Bad John. Big John. Remember that Fred, song? Fred liked your uh, Coven song. Uh, 110 Soldier. Uh, Blaine Cole says it. the uh, Svetlana's by uh, Crimea River. Oh. Which I guess is different than the Crimean River. Uh, Distressed Husker says before the hiring of Rule, I would have said even the losers by Tom Petty. Wow. I mean, wow. Hey, so <laughs> Fred oh. says we've got the shaft for 20 years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill Callahan, blank hole quoting Bill Callahan saying, I don't care about rules. I am wise. You are the fools. Keep your hands off my O line. I think your mother is a bovine. <laughs> there you go. See, we're in the spirit now. All right. So, what all you're saying is that I've got to write a song by next week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll try it could to find be a that. country song or a punk song. Oh, Mark, Mark Wilder's got to go in here. Frankenstein by Edgar Winter. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Never even got a frost advisory. <laughs> says james all right so looks like uh instead of just trying to find a song i have to write a song yes okay oh my eyes bugging me yeah i got some uh uh allergy type related funk now my, I'm, I'm 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 weeping from the, from the laughter yes from, no from the the knockdown of my hard work with that song no but we had no it's tears of laughter john oh, because okay. you, you enjoyed it so much uh, okay, John the Bastard. What's up with that? Uh, John Snow is that like I've a Game been, of Thrones reference? I've been known as John the Bastard. I've never called you that, sir. Well, you know what? The first time I met uh, one of the University of Minnesota's like official school photographers, I introduced him to myself. Or I introduced myself to him as John the Bastard, and he never forgot it. You do like to. Uh... You know, I believe in making a good first impression. That is definitely a first impression. Mm -hmm. uh, TFT says, I'm envisioning John's song set to the music from Love Me Sexy by Jackie Moon. <laughs> uh, I'll look that up. Maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll collaborate, I'll collaborate with Jackie Moon. Now that we're going to find out when you look that up, like Jackie Moon's probably been dead for 25 years. <laughs> I can channel her. Oh, Jackie could be a man's name. Just, you know, Jackie Chan. It's possible. Uh, Fred says, E for effort, John, just like our team got in the weight room for 15 years. Wow. 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 Well. Come on now. I'm I, going. You, you guys will always have this. We yeah, but do we always want it? Have this. Well, I mean, it could use a little <laughs> better graphics there. You know what? Maybe I'll work with some AI and we'll come up with something. But it'll always stay winner, Herbie. It, I just feel like it's missing. Even that is missing. Like it shouldn't be like stay a winner, Herbie. No, see, you want to you want to spell everything out. This is something you could just scream. No, I want it to be a coherent thought. Why? Because that's and these days they text this stuff. Nobody understands that yet. All right, so now we're gonna find out the kids are 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 <laughs> texting the shorthand S W H, <laughs> and it's probably gonna have a uh, uh a, a different meaning to them. Okay, Sing, single white human i don't know uh fred says saint john the bastard patron saint of swearing on the toilet there you go i oh my god i like that i'm gonna keep it <laughs> blaine says john is that an album cover from your younger days john doesn't have any younger days uh 
and Boneled Corn Fed says, how about the song Convey? It even mentions Omaha in it. No, because that's Creighton, and, and Creighton can go to hell. Convoy mentions Creighton? Oh. I think he's talking about Convoy. Oh, you know? okay, C.W. McCall. Like, C.W. McCall, we I, got I a big old it. Convoy walking through the night. Something like that. Going to drive this trucking oh, convoy across the USA. Convoy. Um, all right. Cornhusker Corner says, always stay a winner, Herbie. Gets an F if you write it on a piece of paper in grade school. <laughs> we're not in grade school. Yeah. Corner, we're, a, we're grown ass men. Yeah. We're, we're staying within the 180 character limit. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting one. I don't know exactly how, what the answer is going to be. Uh, Branson Chad says, do you respect PJ Fleck? <laughs> well, he keeps beating us. So until we don't keep losing to him, I think he's earned some, you know, single white Husker SWH. SWH. There you go. Uh, I've already forgotten what the name of the song is. Uh, always be winner. Always it's not even that. Winner. Stay winner. You got it always wrong. Stay, it's your own damn song. Always stay winner. Always be winner. This is I like it. Always be winner. Maybe I'll change that. TFT says Shania Twain. Man, I feel like a winner would be fire. And you know, only the hip, cool, young kids are using the term fire in that manner. So I think we have a winner. Yeah. Um, Cornhusker Corner says it's too much to just say. Always stay a winner, Herbie. All you're doing is leaving out one letter. Are you trying to be edgy and artsy? <laughs> well, yeah. Isn't that how it goes? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. We want we want to have the classiest, uh, most intelligent chance. People with your complete sentences, shit. I, I we're gonna do away with one side of the stadium shouting Husker and the other side of the stadium going Power, and and we're gonna come up with something far more intellectual for the uh, the Matt Rule era going forward. It's like, uh, I do believe that team in Scarlet and Red is going to, and the other side will say, achieve victory. Oh, All I right. thought you were, but that's too long. I know, that's the point, John. You would run out of making, breath. I was making a See joke. this? See, see, that's the point of this. Always stay winner. That you, you remove a syllable. We should probably move on now. <laughs> oh. I don't have anything else. I uh, you don't. Uh, Fred says, "Always stay winner." Sounds like something space aliens uh, uh, infiltrating Nebraska football. Oh, all your bases are belong to us. That's what he's referencing. Yes. You want to hear a funny story about that, Fred? No. For years, for years, <laughs> I wrote in the computer industry. And when I wrote in the computer industry, none of my editors would ever let me include any humor or sarcasm. And so what happened was uh, I would write these articles knowing that they were very boring, they were very IT-oriented, and they were very plain and included no humor or sarcasm. But when I sent screenshots of things I was working on, somewhere in the screenshot, I always included the phrase, all your base are belong to us. And that was my personal joke against the world. It's not a really great story, but you know, it'd be better if I had a magazine to show you. Yep, it would. Yeah. Uh, Cornhusker Corner <laughs> and David Matney both say the same thing. On one side of the stadium, uh, Chance always stay a winner, and the other side, Chance Herbie. He's got it. There you go. The young side with more breath could say always stay winner. Roger says, uh, Husker Powers now stay winner. Yeah. Um, James Marshall <laughs> says, how about Arthur's theme with a change in lyrics? The best that you can do is never enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's brutally honest. TFT says, guess you had to be there, John. You're not, well, not wrong. Yeah, you did. Uh, and Fred says, I enjoyed the story and know all about all your base belong to us. Yeah. So. I don't have anything else, John. Can we? I'm, I'm burning up. Can we go? Are you? Are you tired? No, I'm not tired. I'm just. It's really warm where I'm sitting, so I just want to call it a night. Okay. I. This is going to be too much information. I apologize. I. I feel like I'm sticking to the desk. Well, I don't think I've showered in about four days, so I get. You know, 
your hair's looking a little stringy. <laughs> I, it's who, hot here. Who's it's who's getting hot. married? Uh, my nephew. Your nephew and and yeah. his wife didn't take a look at you and be like, "You need a, a haircut, there, Uncle." Nobody John. has seen me. Oh God, they're you're going to show up at the wedding and they'll be like, "We need the stylist here, pronto." <laughs> this man needs a haircut. Show up and they're going to go. Could you just stay in the back? <laughs> Can you just go back home? <laughs> just start driving. Happened? Just what, go what fly happened? back to Minnesota. Yeah, so. and then I'm going to scream, "Go big red!" Amen. Yeah. Um, Fred's okay. not wrong. I'm on the hot seat. Uh, Born led corn or bone led corn fed says I'm old and tired. I'm off, uh, off here. See you folks and go big red. Uh, Blaine says cheers gents until next time. It's goodbye. Uh, Dave Matney says good night. Always stay winter. Herbie. Uh, Roger Moore says stay cool in Texas. And Fred says there'll, uh, there'll be an escort. Uh, they'll be like <laughs> escort that Husker bum out of there. Probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just a, a little programming note. We are still planning on having a, a live show next week. I won't be here. I'll actually be in Texas, uh, not with John, but in place of John. Uh, so John will find a, a worthy substitute for me, but uh, I will see you in two weeks. John will see you next week. Uh, John, I appreciate you greatly. Yeah, you too. Don't know if I tell you that enough. Maybe I'll write another song. Oh, oh yeah. I have two weeks to write a song and two airplane rides, so anything's possible. Wait. Let me before we go. Just what what kind of song would you like me to write? Like this was kind of a country song. Can you write an Irish folk song? Oh my god! No, I'm kidding. Um, what about a uh, like punk early aughts pop punk like or Good the, Charlotte? Okay, I, I believe tr- you. Okay, uh, TFT. We'll see if Tweety's available uh, to sit in. Uh, it might be somebody else. Um, TFT also says uh, definitely heavy metal. <laughs> Fred says that the next time John writes a song, it will be the first time. <laughs> I laughed way too hard. <laughs> oh my god, that hurts! <laughs> I gotta go. I, was like, I gotta get okay. some water and cool down. Uh, okay. All right, thank you all. Uh, I appreciate you all greatly. Uh, you, you make this a lot of fun. Uh, you make it worth uh, uh, sitting here sweating my nuts off. Uh, thank you, John, as always. My name's Greg Mahochko. This here's John Dam Johnston. This is the Five Heart Podcast, where we remind you each and every week that Five Heart is all the heart you need. John? Always stay winner, Greg. Go Big Red. <sighs> you disappoint me on so many levels. Ha, 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 ha.